So you need extra dimensions because right now we live in four dimensions, which is three spatial plus time. You need more dimensions in order to make this thing work, but we don't have access to more dimensions, so we can't really say for sure. Well, it's, I mean, it seems like a really big intellectual leap, right? We're, we're pretty happy with our three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. So the first pass is like, could this at all, is this just a deal breaker, right? Is there any way that this could be consistent with what we've already observed about the universe? And as you were just alluding to, right, the question is, you know, could such extra dimensions exist? And if so, how would we try and probe whether that's the case? Um, the, the requirement that we can see right off the bat about these extra dimensions is if they were to exist, they can't be the same size as the rest of the dimensions that we see in our universe. So if we look around, we can see that, you know, we have very large spatial extent for, you know, front, back, side to side, up and down, and of course time. But if there were these other directions, they would have to be really, really small compared to the rest of our universe. And the analog for that is, if you imagine looking at an extended object like a wire from really far away, it just looks one dimensional. It just looks like it has a length. But if you were able to get really close to that wire, you'd see that it also has something like a thickness, a radial direction. And so that extra direction is what's called compact, um, meaning that it's very small compared to, say, the length of the wire. So one thing that we do know is that if this had any chance of working, these extra dimensions would have to be compact and very small compared to the rest of our universe. Okay, you're freaking me out right now because, and this, I mean, I'm just going to say it. So I was down in Costa Rica doing ayahuasca for a week. And in that time, I had an experience where I met these beings who told me about dimensions that existed inside of our dimension. So they were alongside of, yet inside of, the dimension that we live in. And I can only think that maybe that was a presupposed, pre-planted, post-hypnotic suggestion <laughs> because I have actually read about string theory <laughs> because if it's not. <laughs> or, or Laura, what drugs have you been taking to, to yeah. get your... And my, my follow-up question is, what did you do? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear the question, yeah. Is it possible to have a compactified time dimension as well? Or is we only is all of the models only stuck with one time dimension? Oh wow. I've never even considered that. Yeah, imagine two dimensions of time. Wow. Holy crap. Go ahead. Yes. So the problem with two time dimensional theories and compact time dimensions in general is that it's very hard to maintain causality in such theories. So if you have a time direction that can loop back on itself, it's possible to have the whole go back in time and shoot your grandpa situation hitting you pretty hard. So to maintain consistent theories with multiple time directions or, or compact time directions, it's not, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but most people don't consider that a very viable way forward. You would have to discard causality altogether in order to do that? I think in general, the claim would be it, it would violate causality in such theories. Um, so there may be some creative ways to get around that, but generically, I think that's true. Uh, by the way, we have a Stephen Hawking on one of our earlier episodes. You can find it in our, That's right. in our archives. That's right. Uh, we went to Ca University of Cambridge and, right. and chilled with him for a bit. Tell me, he proposed a time travel conjecture, something like that. Mm -hmm. to tell us what that was. And does um, that save us from this? Is that? I mean, there are a number of, of conjectures, say, in the, the theory of gravity that say that um, causality is an important structure. So that um, in general, one would not expect that consistent theories of gravity or indeed quantum mechanics should allow such You just things. can't get it to work. Okay. okay. Yeah. That, that's fine. I mean, yeah. I mean, listen. That, mess, that, that removes many movies in the repertoire where you got to go back and change the past. Exactly. Like Terminator. All the Terminator them. is yeah, done. Right. Forget about it. <laughs> but I mean, it makes sense for us to think that way because honestly, we look back on the past, but we look forward to many futures. So the idea of being able to look back and say, at this particular point, all those many futures still exist. If I could get back to that point, then I could change it to one of these other tracks, you know, which, I mean, it's a great fantasy and it makes mm -hmm. sense to have that fantasy. But what you're saying is it's a stupid fantasy because it ain't never going to happen. Well, I would say, you know, never say never in, in science. You got to be careful. But um, certainly it's not something that I think most people have a good idea how to make work in a consistent way at the moment. And that's why I'm not a scientist.